Welcome back. Now I'm on question number six here from the June 2021 International A-Level at Excel Mechanics M1 exam. And this question is about inclined planes and friction and SUVAT and these kind of issues. Now a fixed rough plane is inclined at an angle of theta to the horizontal where the tangent of theta is 5 over 12. A particle of mass 6 kilograms is projected with speed 5 meters per second from a point A on the plane, upper line of greatest slope of the plane. The coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane is 1 over 4. So part A says find the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the particle as it moves up the plane. So I'm going to make a little diagram to illustrate this situation. So we have an inclined plane. So this is the inclined plane. Let's say this is the inclined plane. Um, you have an angle of theta that is inclined to the horizontal. You have the particle. Let's just draw it as a little circle here. And you have its mass, which is 6 kilograms. So that means the force acting on it, the weight acting on it is 6 G newtons. Okay. Um, you have the reaction force between the particle and the surface in which it's in contact with, which always acts in a direction which is perpendicular to the um, surface that it's in contact with. You have a frictional force acting. Now, it's being, it's being projected up the plane. Okay, so it's going up the plane. And its initial speed, which with it's being projected, is 5 meters per second. So that means if it's moving upwards, if there's a frictional force is going to be acting, opposing the motion, so that's going to be acting downwards. And as it's moving, that friction will have reached its maximum amount. So this is F max acting down the plane. Okay, the, that's those are the forces. And of course, what I'm going to do now is because we should always try to resolve forces in a direction which is parallel to the motion. So I'm going to resolve this weight down the plane and also perpendicular to the motion. So I'm going to resolve the weight perpendicular to the plane so this is the angle theta this is the same as the angle here okay because these two triangles here are similar triangles basically and this is a right angle and this is a right angle so this triangle and that triangle they both have right angles and these angles are the same so therefore these two you know, if two the this is this is a you could say this is a shared angle in both triangles so i'm looking at this big triangle here and this little triangle here okay so, um, sorry, this is the shared angle between them, between this big triangle and this little triangle. Both of the big triangle has a right angle and this has a right angle here, but these two angles must be the same. Okay, so that's by similarity. Now, so theta and theta. So if I want to resolve the force of 6 G Newtons parallel to the plane, it's going to be in this direction and it's going to be 6 times G. Now I'm going away from the angle, because the angle is over here, theta, 6g times sine theta. You go away from the angle, it's always sine. Okay, you can think of it as I'm resolving this in this direction here. And that's the opposite. Okay, in that direction, it's opposite the angle. So it's going to be opposite, and this 6g is here, the hypotenuse. You can think of it like that. And here we have as an angle, um, sorry, the resolving of the force per perpendicular to the plane, it's going to be 6g, and this time it will be cosine theta because we're going into the angle or you can alternatively think this is the adjacent side to this angle and that's the hypotenuse so it's going to be cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse so this is going to be 6g cosine theta okay so there we have the resolving of this force in that direction we also know that friction has reached its maximum value and that's equal to mu times r and they ask us to find the magnitude of the frictional force now if i know that if I can find what R is, now R we know if we if we resolve perpendicular to the plane, we have R and that's equal to 6G cosine theta. Okay, and we know that cos, now we know that the tan of theta is 5 over 12. How do I deal with tan of theta is 5 over 12? Let me just move this stuff down here for now and then we can deal with that. So, oops. So, let's deal with that first. Okay, so I know that um, the tan of theta is 5 over 12. Now, I could find out what theta is as an angle, and, you know, have to be rounded then, and then I can find out what sine of the angle is and cosine of the angle is. However, uh, many times they ask you to give your answer in exact form or in terms of g and stuff like that, so you should understand what to do, and this makes life very easy. 
um, that you don't have to actually work out the angle, just the ratios of the angle. So if tan theta is 5 over 12, then you could draw a right angle triangle, and you could say that the opposite side of the angle is 5 and the adjacent is 12, which means the hypotenuse by Pythagoras is going to be the square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared, which is the square root of 169, which is 13. It's 5, 12, 13 triangle. So now we can say that the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is 5 over 13. And the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is 12 over 13. So we have now ratios for sine and cosine, which we will need. So I know r is equal to 60 cosine theta, which is equal to 6 times g. I'll leave it in terms of g. Cosine theta is 12 over 13, which gives me 72. 6 12s are 72. So 72 over 13. G. That's R. Okay, now for F, we know F is equal to mu R. So you're going to have a quarter times 72 over 13 G. So 4 goes into 72, 1 remainder 3, 18 times. So it's going to be um, 18 G over 13 G. So 18. 18g over 13 newtons. Okay, so that's the answer to part A. However, I'll just write it in terms of decimal places. So I'll have 18 times 9.8 divided by 13. And that gives us 882 over 65, which is 13.569. 13.569 newtons. So we can write our answer as 13. 6 newtons or we could write it as 14 newtons or we could write it in, in this form any of these are actually acceptable unless they tell you otherwise sometimes they say find in terms of g so you leave your answer like this okay um here you can choose between 3 sf or 2 sf 2 sf is acceptable because we're using g as 9.8 in our calculations as requested in the in the um, instructions so you can use 14 newtons or you could use 13.6 newtons answering to 3SF, which is also acceptable in these answers. So that's part A done for this question. Now we're going to move on to part B. Okay, for part B, it tells us the particle comes to instantaneous rest at the point B. So let's say this is the point A where it starts, and say this is the point B where it comes to instantaneous rest. So the initial velocity of this at A is 5 meters per second, and its final velocity is 0. Okay, so it's going through a constant acceleration. So we can use the SUVAT equations. Okay, so we've got to find the distance between A and B. So if we're going to use the SUVAT equations, what we know, what we've got to find is S. We know U and V. Now, if I can find what A is, I can then use V squared equals U squared plus 2AS and find what S is. Okay, so what, what I need to do is find what A is. So in order to find A, I need to resolve the forces parallel to the plane to think about the acceleration so um, basically the acceleration is is, is given by F, the resultant force equals mass times acceleration now the resultant force here is basically acting all in the direction opposite the motion so it's going to be minus fm which is f max minus 6g sine theta and that's equal to the mass which is 6 times acceleration which is a now i know what f max is we found it already and i know what uh, theta is and sine theta we know that sine theta was 5 over 13 from the last question so i can say all right the answer from the last question is minus is 18 over 30 so minus 18 over 13 g minus uh, 6g times 5 over 13 is equal to 6a so i can use this now to find what a is so that's minus 18 minus 30, that's minus 48 G over 13 equals, whoops, what's happened there? Equals 6A, and then I divide by 6, so I end up with A equals minus 8 over 13 G. So I can leave it in that form for now, um, leave it in terms of G until the end. So the, we know the acceleration, so now I can use Suvat equations. Okay, so S is what I have to find u is five was it five five meters per second 
V is zero. A is negative eight over 13 G. Because I'm considering, you know, this direction between A and B. This is from A to B. Okay. Um, that's an S, not a five. It looks like a five, there, doesn't it? That's an S. Okay. It still looks like a five. Put that down right here. Okay. Um, then T, we don't know. We don't need to know. Here we can use V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Now, I know that the final velocity is zero. So there's a zero equals U squared is 5 squared, which is 25, plus 2 times acceleration, which is minus 8 over 13G times S. So I can use this to find what S is. So I have zero equals 25 minus 16G um, over 13 s so i'll have basically um 16 g s over 13 equals 25 so s equals 13 times 25 over 16 g and that should give me the answer for s which is the distance of displacement when it comes to instantaneous rest so i'm going to take 13 13 times 25 divided by 16 times 9.8 and that gives me 2.072 zero so on so to 3sf which i'm going to write my answer it's 2.07 i could write my answer to 2sf as 2.1 if i want to it's 2 but i prefer to leave it in that form 3sf is it's just safer so that's the distance AB. So that's the displacement AB. Okay, so here we have the answer to question number six, part B. Okay, so part C says the particle now slides down the plane from B. So it's reached B. Okay, uh, it starts sliding down from B at the instant when the particle passes through the point C in the plane. The speed of the particle is again five meters per second. Find the distance BC. So we've got to consider from B to C now. B to C. Okay, I'm considering from B to C. So again, we can use SUVAT here. Um, now, the distance is what we have to find. The initial speed this time is zero, and the final this speed this time is five meters per second. Now, there's a difference now in the situation. Okay, so there's a new situation now because it's now moving down the plane. So there's no more friction acting down the plane. The friction is always opposing the motion. So this friction now, it switches from being down the plane to up the plane because it's now moving downwards. So if we consider the same forces acting upon this particle, okay, we can now say that the force acting, um, the frictional force is now acting up the plane and it's still equal to f max it's still f max will be the same um okay so uh, we got to find the new acceleration so let's look at let's look for the new acceleration so let's see the resultant force this time it's moving down the plane now okay and it's moving at five meters per second down the plane so we can resolve down the plane as positive we have 6g sine theta minus f max equals m times a okay so f max was 13 over 18 over 13 g so you have 6 g times this was 5 over 13 minus 18 g over 13 equals 6 a so we have 30 g minus 18 30 minus 18 is going to be um 12 g over 13. 30 minus 18 is 12 G over 13 equals 6 A. Therefore, A is equal to 12 divided by 6, which is 2. So it's 2 G over 13 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration now. 2 G over 13 meters per second squared. And we don't know the time. So now we can use uh, these values as V squared equals U squared plus 2 AS to find what S is. So now... We can say v squared equals u squared plus 2 as this time the final speed is 5 so that's 25 here and the initial speed is 0 so that's 0 uh, v squared equals u squared plus 2 times a which is 
2g over 13 okay times s and that's what we have to find so we have 25 equals 4g over 13s and so s is equal to 25 times 13 divided by 4g okay so that's the distance between b and c or displacement so you have 25 times 13 divided by this time it's 4 times g so I can just go back here and change this to a 4. And that gives you 8.290, 8.290 da, 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 meters. So to 3SF, that's 8.29 meters. And that's the answer to part C. And that concludes this question. Question number six, thank you for watching. Other questions that you might want to watch from this paper can be found on the link which will appear somewhere in this area at the end of the video. Other questions which have got to do with, um, I guess this is kinematics, uh, mixed up with um, you know friction, and so I guess it would be under dynamics, I guess, with constant acceleration as well. Uh, you can find a link to other, I'll put links to other topics which involve these also around the screen somewhere you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link that should appear somewhere in the middle and you can find other papers or other units like p1 p2 p3 p4 s1 and also igcse papers if you look in the description of the video you'll find links that will take you to other um, papers thank you for watching and see you soon